Hey friends, as I'm sure you can tell, things are a little bit different. I'm gonna have to film from my home office for a little bit just due to personal reasons, things going on behind the scenes in my personal life. Uh, just, just nothing's a huge deal. I just have to work from home more. So that's gonna be happening. Not gonna have the uh, normal set with the not who's signed behind me. Don't have Reese in the corner where I can just shout at him like he's my long lost companion. It's just gonna be me and you like a man shouting into the wilderness. So let's do that. Let's talk about the RTX 3080 after I tell you about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video sponsor is Force Sigmatic. This is a sponsor that I've wanted for the longest time because I have spent so much money on their products. And in case you're wondering what they are, they make products with mushrooms in them. Specifically, their mushroom coffee with lion's mane is something that I drink every single day. This is their starter kit, which they sent to us. You got mushroom powder, you've got their mushroom coffee, you've got their mushroom cacao mix, which is helping you to unwind at night. It's a very relaxing mix. It has reishi mushroom. This one has lion's mane. And this one is, what, what are you? It's got a lot of mushrooms. And you're wondering, why mushrooms? Well, there's a lot of research that's been done on the cognitive benefits of consuming mushrooms in dietary fashions. We'll leave links in the video description to the National Institute of Health. They have tons of published journals on the cognitive benefits, the cognitive repair that can be done with consuming things like lion's mane mushrooms. And they put it in the coffee. It doesn't taste like mushrooms. Reese, do you taste the mushrooms? No. Nope. Not at all. It just tastes like really good coffee. I am down to one cup a day. This is their starter kit. This is everything I've purchased myself. And that's why I wanted them as a sponsor. We now have them as a sponsor. And if you use the link in the video description, you can get 10% off by using coupon code UFD tech. It's amazing stuff. I just, I feel the best that I've ever felt drinking their coffee over any other brand of coffee that I've ever had. The Lion's Mane, you could say it's placebo effect, but the fact that I've been on it since I moved back to the United States and I haven't felt the need to switch back to another coffee, I'm not sure that's still placebo effect. I have sunk so much money into this company because I absolutely love their product. For Sigmatic, I, I can't believe we have them as a sponsor. I'm so excited. Check them out. So RTX 3080, we got some big, big happenings in the tech industry. We got pictures and we got more spec leaks of the RTX 3080 and the pictures seem to be pretty legit of the actual shroud design of the RTX 3080, but it's weird. So brace yourself, you either are going to love it, you're going to hate it, or you're gonna stand somewhere in the middle like somebody who can't commit to anything in life, either way you wanna do it. But here we go, here are the pictures of the RTX 3080. You can see right here, it has one exposed fan and then one hidden fan behind the actual fins that are on the heatsink. This is one of the craziest designs that we probably have ever seen from NVIDIA, which is just insane, obviously, if this is true. However, there are a few reasons why we would think this is true and this isn't just some fan-made replica. Uh, but first off, let's not just talk about the looks of the freaking thing, but let's talk about the fact that the PCB is designed in a way where it only happens to go through two thirds of the entire shroud. It's not even taking up the full length. This is one of the weirdest designs that we have seen from NVIDIA. It's kind of cool. Obviously, uh, somebody might be saying, oh, why is it blue? If they're in video, they're in green. Well, that's just like shrink wrap uh, put around the entire card. So that's not necessarily a huge deal. But we have seen leaks of cards before with their shrouds. You can see this GTX 1080. This is back in 2016 over in the LTT forums as well as the 1080 and 1070. When we tend to get shrouds, they tend to be the final product. It's not necessarily something that we get all that often. PCBs are here and there. You could have prototypes for different things. But when we get shrouds, actual pictures of things that are in production, they tend to be real. And thankfully, a few people actually took to 3D rendering these things and making them even more beautiful so that we can see what they would look like IRL. Take a look at that. Fans on both sides. It's This is one of the sleekest designs I've ever seen. I personally actually really love it. You guys can let me know what you think of it down below. Um, but you can see there are even more 3D renders. This one has a nice green tint to it to give it that NVIDIA vibes, which absolutely works. I personally love the look of this RTX 3080. And uh, I mean, I'm not gonna put any money on it, but it appears that this could be a real for a couple of reasons. Number one is that there is a tiny NVIDIA logo right here, as you can see. And typically when fan-made stuff is made, you don't get that kind of level of detail of anything happening. Number two, there's still the plastic on it 
Again, fan renders, fan 3D prints, people making their own design to bamboozle people wouldn't go through this much effort and they wouldn't obscure the item that they would be trying to promote. They would want it as clean as possible. That's again, speaking typically, obviously this could be the greatest bamboozle of all time. Number two, the irregular PCB shape. We've had this confirmed by other people in the past that Nvidia was going with an irregular PCB shape and the fact that this is now a like Pac-Man style thing trying to eat the fan it could be absolutely there it also says emc certification pending on the pci express connector which is you know uh, just a good indication that it's also real and it also kind of just looks like something nvidia would do so i'm on the hype train that this is real i'm on the hype train that this is beautiful let me know what you think of it down below but while you're thinking about the design i want you to think about the performance that you're going to get with the rtx 3080 because uh, is it as good as you were thinking well if the new rumors coming out about the rtx 3080 are any indication my my by golly it's going to be fast because uh while i'm calling it to rtx 3080 the naming hasn't been confirmed obviously on the shroud maybe it is so i mean that could be the confirmation that nvidia is going 10 20 30 now that's a possibility I wouldn't doubt that they would do that. The new rumors are coming out that the RTX 3080 is gonna be based on the GA102 die with 4,352 CUDA cores. And if you're following along at home, that is the exact same CUDA core amount that the 2080 Ti has. So the 3080 will just take the direct replacement of that, except in case you haven't been paying attention to the previous leaks and rumors that we've been hearing about the performance of these cards. While the 4,352 CUDA cores is beautiful, the 10 gigabytes of VRAM that we should be getting and the 15 teraflops we should be getting is absolutely stunning we've also heard things of 10 to 15 percent ipc improvement 15 teraflops on the 3080 would be quite good but then also on top of that we've heard up to quadruple the amount of performance on rtx so that we could actually see ray tracing implemented in games up to 144 frames per second like it kind of probably should have been from the very beginning there is some indication that the naming scheme is a little off this leak is saying that the rtx 3080 and that there might be an rtx 3090 instead of a 3080 ti which is going to have 21 gigabits per second second GDDR6X, which is kind of crazy because we obviously saw with the 10 series, NVIDIA made the GDDR5X. They put that on the 1080 Ti and I believe the 1080. I think it was just the 1080 Ti. I can't even remember. It's been so long. Anyways, GDDR6X being that next step would be quite crazy. The RTX 3080 performance should best in RTX 2080 Ti, which again, obviously everybody following at home is probably saying, but what about the price? Are they going to raise the price? I hope they don't. I mean, I've said this on our hot news live stream, which you can check out twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. We're streaming every day, Monday through Friday, hot news live. Anyways, I've talked about this over there. I think NVIDIA already gave us their price increase with the 20 series. They accounted for the tensor cores and the ray tracing cores that they were putting in the cards, and they made us pay the price for the 20 series to invest into the 30 series. I would be personally, I'd be personally surprised if NVIDIA raises the price at all with the 30 series. Maybe they will with 40 series but i'm thinking 30 series the 3080 will cost 700 dollars. the 3080 ti or 3090 whatever the heck they're going to call it it's going to be 1200 dollars. that's my guess i don't have any behind the scenes information backing me up there so take it that with the biggest old brett grain of salt you can have and let's move on to the next little bit which is something that i've been waiting for you guys might be really super excited about the rtx 3080 but i've been super excited for the ryzen 7 4700g and we have some good indication that asrock is going to be putting one of theirs into their desk mini sff pc which is going to be quite good we can see based on this information of the engineering sample that's put into the sff pc that this in aligns with the fact that it's a 4700 g eight cores 16 threads eight compute units of vega on it you just get a really good apu the cpu performance is going to be out of this world the gpu performance would obviously be nominal for you to play whatever esports titles you want i'm super excited for this hopefully asrock gets this out soon it's going to be based on an stx board and it's going to be based on the x300 chipset but that might mean it's overclockable too which would be quite beautiful and what else is beautiful is the fact that amd and intel once had a baby together and they called it kb lake g but the sad part of that story is that that baby grew up and died 
I guess uh, that's the best w place I can take this metaphor because three months ago, Intel came out and just basically was like, we're not updating this thing ever again. Hard is get rid of it. Well, AMD is also now pulling driver update support for the long uh, abandoned child between AMD and Intel KB Lake G, which obviously had Intel CPU and AMD GPU. They merged together. They had some kisses and it's over. Obviously, there's a few people complaining about this because if you did have KB Lake G, you won't get a driver update for the upcoming Windows 10. 2004 update which could potentially cause some issues maybe it will maybe it won't but yeah the the love child between intel and amd is dead and the love child between amd and amd is kind of dead or on hiatus for a little bit because AMD's smart shift technology which they unveiled at ces about their laptops how the cpu and the gpu all come together to do the wibbly wobblies to make faster performance because it can move tdp around and power dynamic it was called smart shift because it shifted the power around well frank azor who's part of amd came out and said that there will be no more smart shift laptops this year it's June, it's like the beginning of June. So for the next six months, we will not see, at least according to Frank, another laptop that features an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU put together, which is really weird. The only one that's currently out there is the Dell G5 15 Special Edition, as you can see here. It has the Ryzen 5 4600H or the Ryzen 7 4700H with the uh, 5600M. But again, according to Frank Azor, it's just not happening. It's a brand new technology and to Dell's credit, they jumped on it first. I explained reasons why during my interview with PC World, no more smart shift laptops are coming this year, but the team is working hard on having more options ASAPP for 2021. So in case you wanted it, what were you thinking? AMD was going to deliver on a technology they announced this year? Pfft, get out of here. Now, Intel and NVIDIA's marketing money in the laptop industry is probably way too much for them to give it up because AMD is small fry. At least that's what I hear in the industry. Intel and NVIDIA have a lot of marketing cash for laptops. And while they're not necessarily paying you to not use AMD, they aren't necessarily paying you to use AMD either. So, you know, that. That's my speculation. Obviously, you can take that for what it's worth. And you can take... The fact that you couldn't use Ryzen first gen on an X570 motherboard for what it's worth, which is nothing now, because you will now be able to use first gen Ryzen and Raven Ridge on their X570 ROG Strix E gaming motherboard because they've updated the BIOS because it's a 32 megabyte chip. They made it happen. This isn't the only motherboard out there, the only X570 motherboard that can support first gen Ryzen, but it's now one of the newest ones and the newest Intel chips are hot and loud in case you hadn't heard they're uh they're very powerful things that take a lot of energy well intel giving us the power tables behind this their uh power limits and their tau which is basically how long it could run at the power limit two until it has to retreat to being a po diddly piece of crap that it first was you can see here the 10900k can go start at 125 watts to reach base clock but then goes up to 250 watts for 56 seconds the 10700k also does the same thing for 5600 uh for 56 seconds 10600k same thing you can see the various wattages intel just giving us that chart and intel actually giving people seeds because it looks like intel's ready to start promoting tiger lake sending this out to legit review saying summer is coming and so is our next gen mobile processor codenamed tiger lake with tigers roar tiger two pound bag of orange two to three feet tall so they sent out tigers roar tiger i saw a tiger and a tiger saw a man and it's a tiger saw a man going to an Apple store to buy stuff because we're sheeple. And it turns out that Apple sheeple have Apple cards and the Apple cards can give you a 0% interest on iPhones. Well, it looks like Apple's looking to expand that program to work for iPad, Mac, AirPods, and plenty of other Apple based products where they're just going to give you 24 months of free financing for those products because obviously they want you locked in on their ecosystem using their app store, getting the money for that stuff. It all works out in Apple's favor in the end, don't you know? And don't you know that uh, some iPhone 11 users are experiencing an issue with their display, don't you know? That was my worst attempt at a Canadian accent. I'll probably not do that again. That's why I need Reese in the room. I should probably just bring him here and just have him sit in the corner and just yell at me when I do things wrong. Anyways, iPhone 11 models are now experiencing a green tint after you unlock them for a second. This is apparently if you unlock it in a dark room or you have night shift or dark mode on, then the green tint only stays for a few seconds. This sounds like a first world problem to me. I get, hopefully they fix it. Oh no, my screen changed for half a second. Ah, which is how long it takes some game players to 
speed run games. And you can see that on Games Done Quick. However, it turns out that the upcoming summer Games Done Quick is going to be online only this year, which makes sense, obviously, with the coronavirus going on. They will not be able to hold it in person. So Games Done Quick going to be an online only event. And online only is where you can buy stuff from the European PlayStation Store if you're in Australia. I guess you could technically ship stuff, but you're on the underside of the world and technically Australia doesn't exist. It makes it a whole huge issue. Anyways, there are apparently four people who tried to purchase something from Sony Europe and there was like the downloads were faulty. Anyways, they asked for their money back from Sony and Sony said, hey, you've had it for more than 14 days. No, thank you. Well, according to Australian consumer law, they are not allowed to do that. You have to give them a refund. And even though Sony Europe's not based in Australia, that doesn't matter a freaking little bit because they now are facing a fine of $2.4 million to pay out because they violated the ACL. We'll see if this actually plays out and if they end up actually getting any money. But I will tell you that I want to give my money to EK Water Blocks because you might think, oh, the name EK Water Blocks, Water Blocks, they make water cooling stuff. Well, according to their expo that they had last week, they are now venturing into the realm of air cooling. You see their first design of an air cooler right here. And they've also talked about how they will have a single tower design, but they are also working on a dual tower design upcoming in the future, which may mean they can compete with the NHD 15, which would be quite good. EK makes some really good stuff. We'll have to see how this performs, obviously, when they do finally release. But EK coming out with air coolers, kind of cool stuff. And what's also kind of cool, sort of, uh, SSDs, they can run cool sometimes. They also run hot on some parts, but you're not supposed to cool down all of the parts because some parts run better when they're hot. Anyways, this is all segueing to the fact that China's based YMTC is looking to launch their own SSDs soon. China, obviously, as we've talked about before, is growing more in the semiconductor industry. They're growing more in the founder industry with SMIC. They started producing their own DDR4, as we reported last week, and now it looks like they're going to start producing SSDs as well. And Google can't help but produce a giant pile of crap when it comes to Stadia. I just, I can't even stand it anymore. You would think, okay, one of the big name titles that came when Stadia was announced was the fact that Cyberpunk 2077 was going to be on Google Stadia. They said it wasn't going to be there at launch, but it would be there. Well, you would figure with the delay from April 16th to September for Cyberpunk 2077, that would give them enough time to potentially make Stadia work. Well, turns out, no. It's going to be here before the end of the year, according to the Google representative, but Cyberpunk 2077 will be releasing on September 17th for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, and Stadia will come at some point later. Who knows when? I'll tell you when. Maybe never. Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Stadia is dead before the end of the year, Oof. especially with the Take-Two CEO coming out and saying that it was underwhelming, and now the fact that a huge launch title is not going to be there. I'm just, I'm sad about Stadia. And I'm sad that I don't have Reese here. Kind of makes me a little lonely. But the good news is I have you here and I have you guys watching us over at our Twitch live stream, which we do Monday, Wednesday, Monday through Friday. I don't know why I threw Wednesday in there. Check us out twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple and also check out today's video sponsor. Don't forget to check out Four Sigmatic at the link in the video description. Check out their mushroom stuff, mushroom coffee, mushroom tea. It's beautiful. Link in the video description. Use coupon code UFD Tech to save 10% off when you purchase from them. Do it, friends. Get the good bean juice and the mushroom juice. It's good juices. Great. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett. Thank you for enduring the home videos for a little while. Really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, friends.